Welcome to CAS 133 Columbia Gorge Community College, The Dalles, Oregon. Mrs. Hugh, instructor. This is going to be your first video, really, of the weeks of the quarter. It's going to probably be a little bit longer, but it has a lot of material in it that will keep you from making mistakes. So please watch clear to the end. When you log in, you're going to come in. Hopefully you've read all this material already. You do need to do your Start Here video. It gives you the basics on the class, class information, information on how the class works, meet your instructor. You do need to read the syllabus. In a face-to-face -face class, the instructor stands up there the first day and reads the whole thing to you. You're in college. Please read your syllabus. It has materials in it. They're considered vital for the class. It has class policies, late work procedures, when work's due, um, ADA information, it has all sorts of things in it you may need to know at some point during the term. Of course, content grading rubrics, obviously you may want to know how things are being graded. Extra credit, people will send me emails saying, can we do extra credit? Well, yeah, it's right here, read it please. Late work policy, you need to know what the late work policy is so that you can understand when I'm going to take late work and when I'm not. Email etiquette and etiquette, there are some rules that go with how you act in an online class. You need to know those and respect those. Um, sometimes people write things that they would never say. I've had emails sent to me that I could pretty well guess nobody would ever walk up to an instructor, professor in a face-to-face -face class and say, but they'll write it in an email. Not a good thing to do. You'll get a lot more positive. Um, results with a little honey than a lot of vinegar and uh, so I do suggest you know what's appropriate and what's not. It's also important in the business world. It may cost you your job if you don't understand what you should and shouldn't do. Assignment sheet if you'd like to get that printed out. Instructors news form is where I'm going to be posting things. Things change in a class constantly. We discover maybe the first person or two that's doing something that week. We discover a new problem. Microsoft loves to change things quickly. And so sometimes I need to post things or add things or change directions. And if you're not reading those and you do it the old way or the wrong way, it doesn't work out so well for you again. Coffee shop is really student to student. That's not where you say, by the way, anybody know how to do this? Because the other people in the class probably don't know how to do it either. But there is one person that does know how to do it. Me send me an email. I'm the one that can actually answer that question for you and help you. Your other students are probably still trying to figure it out just like you are. Sort of the blind leading the blind. So please don't put questions in there about class material. Please send those to me as emails. That would be much better about putting together a study group or maybe you need to get to the campus on Wednesday and your car's in for repair and you're wondering if anybody from your area happens to be heading in on Wednesday and could give you a lift. That type of stuff goes in the coffee shop. You've got other resources here. If you have some disabilities, please don't just email me say, oh, by the way, because I can't do anything with it by law until it has gone through the college and I've been sent the college paperwork that I have to have. So there's information there if you need to follow up on that. You don't know how to get the sound working in the PowerPoints, please make sure you go in here and get the PowerPoint and then you can go ahead and get the sound working. Now just an FYI, I mentioned this in week two as well, but Microsoft offers a viewer. So if you are using the college machines to do your work, but you don't have Office on your machine at home and you'd like to be able to view the PowerPoints and do some of the studying ahead of time, you can go in here and you can, well, when it eventually gets here, and you can type in PowerPoint Viewer. Of course, if you can spell it, it'll work better. And it'll give you a number of different choices of types of PowerPoint viewers, and you can download one of them. Now, what I will tell you is Office Word 07, PowerPoint 07, 2010, 213, 365, all use the same file format, a DOCX. So if you have any of those versions of PowerPoint on your computer or Word on your machine, you can view my materials. You may not be able to do your projects, but you can view my materials. But if you don't have anything, then you're going to need to go download this viewer, and it'll let you look at a PowerPoint 
even though you cannot actually access it as far as um, creating one or making one with it or changing it or anything. So that is one thing you have if you don't have it on your machine and you want to be able to view my materials. You should already get this done and if you have not done so you need to read this. You need to take this test. When you take this test you need to put in your email address and my email address. There is a pre-test and a post-test. You may only take each one once. So you want to make sure you get your address and my address in there correctly. Then it will be emailed to me. If for some reason I don't get the email then you can resend a copy of yours. You can forward it. I will post your grades right there so you'll be able to see if or I've gotten it or not. If it's not there, I don't have it. At least when I've said I've graded, I will grade as we kind of go the first week or so usually. Then you need to watch the video on cheating and take this little short six question test. Post an introduction to yourself and reply to someone else's. Now we're into week one, which is really our focus. This week we're basically studying Windows and what comes with Windows. So we're going to be using some Windows materials. You'll notice there are a number of support materials up here. These materials are designed to help you if you're having problems. Like, I've never zipped a folder. I don't know anything about it. What are you talking about? There you go. There's a resource. I can't get the sound working. There's a resource. I'm not sure how to upload a file to Moodle. This is my first online class. Well, there's a, a file on how to do that. So these are support materials. Not all of you will use all of them, but they are support there. Rather than emailing me for questions, go check the support materials first. Then you may be still emailing me, but at least look at that first. Then over here, you'll notice I have it in red. These are required. You need to go through these materials. So you're going to go through the directions. You're going to watch that video. You're going to watch it all the way through. That's this video. You're going to go clear to the end of it, even if it takes a while. Figure if you were sitting in class for two and a half hours of lecture, this is not a two and a half hour video. Then you're going to open this structural material. And you're going to do the computer basics for everybody. And then you're going to look at which computer you own. Like, oh, I'm still using an XP or Vista machine. Then you're going to do WordPad for XP and Vista. And you're going to do Paint for XP and Vista. Let me tell you, Office 2013 will not install on anything older than Windows 7. So if you're planning to use a Vista or XP machine for this class, you will only be able to do the learning instructional, you know, pre-work type of work with it. You'll have to go find a machine that's a Windows 7 or Windows 8 machine that has Office 2013 on it to do the actual assignments after the second week. First week, second week, you're okay third week not so much so. Maybe you have a Windows 7 machine so you're going to do computer basics Windows 7 Windows 7 and then here's an extra one for Windows 7 people so you can view a little bit of information about some of the cool tools in Windows 7. You're going but but there's no Windows 8 but and right here is the Windows 8 material. So you will come out here and you will view the Windows 8 material. Now, if you don't own a Windows 8 machine, you don't need to view the Windows 8 machine unless your materials, unless you're curious. Then you're welcome to. You can always look at everything. The unit goals are hanging out down here. They actually probably should be up here. I'll get those moved. This is a summary overview. This is like going to the back of the book and kind of seeing what's coming up, what's going on. It's not the whole book. It's not step by step. And you probably could not read the back of the book and then go take a comprehensive test on the story and answer the questions correctly. This is the back of the book. This is just a summary overview type of area. Just sort of kind of make sure you got everything sort of up to speed. Do not use it for your directions. Your directions are up here. This is an overview. And then your performance test questions. And those are going to be your directions for completing the assignment. So let's walk through each assignment a little bit. You're going to be doing a word pad. So you're going to go down to your start. You're going to go to All Programs, maybe. You're going to go to assess Accessories. And there's two programs here. One is Notepad. It's kind of a wimpy little program. It doesn't have much to it, as you can see. Do not use Notepad. The other one you want is actually called WordPad. And you want to open WordPad. Now, some of you are going to want to go use Microsoft Word, because that's what you bought. That's what the class is. And that's not this assignment. This assignment is using a Windows tool called WordPad. 
You can see it has a lot more than notepad. You're going to type your assignment. There's some directions in there with the exact questions you're supposed to be answering. So you're going to write your answers here. And then you're going to save it. Now, when you hover over Save As, it brings you up some options. I did not click it. I hovered. Rich text document is its normal file format, and that works in a lot of cases. But for this particular assignment, I want you to learn how to change file format. That is a useful skill to know. You owe a, oh no, Office 2013. Your friend owns 203, and you cannot share files. There are some things you can do by changing file formats that will let your friend open your files. So, knowing how to change files is important. On your final project, you may want to change file types some. And until you know how to do it, you're sort of stuck. So this is a good skill to know. So instead of just saving in the default, which is what we'll do later, like in week two, but this week, we're going to go to plain text. There's two ways to do it. Hover, click. It already says plain text. Figure out where you want it, your desktop, your flash drive, you name it. and click Save. It'll say it takes all the formatting out. I know that. And then I can go and open it. Now, it will open in Notepad probably on your machine simply because it's how the default is set. Mine has changed. My TXT files, which are the plain text format, will open in WordPad. The other option you have, oops, I guess I should have just had WordPad open, is when you go to Save it, you go File, and you click on this instead of Hover. It brings this up right away. You pick your desktop or wherever you want it to go. And this time, you have to do the drop-down box here because you haven't told it what you want. And you're going to put it, it'll come up like this, and you'll put it in the TXT or text document format. And you'll do the save. And there you go. If you do not follow that step to save it as a TXT plain text document, you will get 50% because you've missed one of the important learning skills of doing the project. One piece of it is learning that WordPad's there. So if you're on a machine that doesn't have Office, doesn't have Open Office, um, for whatever reason you can't use Google Docs, you need to write a... There you go. You've got a tool that will work. Half of the assignment. Other half of the assignment is learning how to stay in a different file format. Same for Paint. You're going to come in here. You're going to do the same type of thing, except this time you're going to find the Paint program. It's still in Accessories. You're going to open up Paint. You're going to draw your picture. Hopefully you'll take a little more time and do a little better job than I'm doing but none of us want to watch me draw a picture and I'm not a great paint artist. I'm not just a great artist, period. There we go. Paint lousy picture is done. Yours will be better. I've seen some gorgeous ones, by the way. Again, you have the same options here. If you hover, you get the list. A PNG file is the default, um, and especially on the newer versions like Windows 7, Windows 8. Unfortunately, not a lot of machines can open PNGs if they're not Windows 7 or Windows 8. Macs can't open them. Older machines can't open them not a great file format ever to use, so you want to save as a JPEG. That's like a camera file format. And again, you can either click here and change it here, and there we go. It's been saved. So that's what you're going to want to do for both of those. Now, Let's talk one last or two last assignments here, the Windows Performance Test Directions. These are directions for making file folders. The idea is you're going to save your work in an organized manner so you can find it again. So it's going to test if you can make folders, save files, zip folders, and upload to Moodle. So you're going to make a folder on your desktop, and if you're using a flash drive, make it on your flash drive. That's fine. Name it CAS133, and inside that, you're going to make a folder and name it Week 1. Then below that folder, you're going to make week 2, week 3, week 4, week 5, week 6, week 7, week 8, week 9, week 10, week 11, or finals week for most terms except for fall. Fall you're going to also have to make a week 11 with week 12 being finals week. There are, for whatever reason, there's one extra week in fall term. 
Do not make these folders inside of week one. Make these folders below week one. So I open it up and I see a list. Then put your word pad in it. Either save it directly in there or copy it in there. Same here, or move it in there. Then once you've made it, you're going to zip it. You're going to right click it. You're going to do a zip. It'll say send to or compressed. And basically the difference in the look between a zipped and a not zipped file is I have this folder it's called May Training. That's a regular file. I can open it up. I can edit it. I can change documents. I can put documents in. I can take documents out. But once I right click, I go send to, compressed. It'll zip it. The zip folder will show up here with a zipper on it. And that folder I can upload together as all as one unit, but I cannot edit it, I cannot change it, I cannot add to it, I cannot edit the files in it. Once I've uploaded it to Moodle, basically it's trash. This becomes your working folder. Now if you make a boo-boo and you have to correct it, you want to correct it with this folder. And then you will make a zipped again. And that's basically what these steps say here. And then you're going to use that regular folder to continue to save your work on. So that is the Windows Performance Test. The last thing you have right here is your disaster recovery form. And when you do a form, you do your original post. And when you go to do that, then you also make sure that you do a 100-word reply or more. And you do a 50 word reply or more to another student. You click add a new discussion topic and you add your topic. Now, if you're not sure, if you type in Word, you will find it says I've done five words right down here at the bottom. If I click it, I can open it up and see the information. So you should be able to, as you get Office installed on your machine, and you get word, you should be able to do a real quick and easy count. The first week, you might be going one, two, three, four, five. Not the easy way if you don't have Office yet. Remember, you can do week one work and week two work without having Office or the textbook, although it's nice to have them. Um, you can do them. Please don't tell me a week or two in the quarter that you can't do it because you didn't have the book. You don't need the book. Also, if you're in the hybrid version of this, you're going to see the same video, but your course shell will look slightly different. It's going to have this color, but I will tell you that course shells can change at any time. But it works exactly the same way. All the same links, all the same materials, everything is the same other than color. That's in part so that I can keep the classes straight. Hope this helps and you have a good time this week.